On the cold, still night of November 16, 2012, in the peaceful suburban town of Willoughby Hills, Ohio, the air was thick with the quiet that only comes in the dead of night. Families were nestled in their homes, the streets empty, the town wrapped in the safety of slumber. But at 1.17 am, the silence was violently broken by a frantic 911 call, a call that would shatter the lives of everyone involved. Inside the Canfield household, a scene of unimaginable horror was unfolding. What started as an ordinary evening in a seemingly typical family home was about to descend into a terrifying nightmare. The details of that night would reveal a dark and twisted story, one of manipulation, betrayal, and cold-blooded murder. This night would mark the beginning of a chilling tale where nothing was as it seemed and the facade of normalcy would be ripped away to expose the grim reality beneath. In a matter of minutes, a family's life would be turned upside down and a once quiet town would become the setting for a story that would haunt its residents for years to come. This is the story of the Canfield family, a story of trust betrayed, innocence lost, and the dark forces that can lurk behind the doors of even the most seemingly ordinary homes. Around 1.17 morning, the Willoughby Hills 911 dispatch center received a call that would send chills down the spine of even the most seasoned operators. On the other end of the line was a terrified 13-year-old girl, Megan Canfield, her voice shaking with fear and disbelief. Struggling to find the words, Megan desperately tried to convey the horror unfolding before her eyes. In the dark of night, she had been jolted awake by the frantic barking of the family dog and the gut-wrenching screams of her mother, Lisa Canfield. Confused and terrified, Megan ventured out of her room, only to witness a sight that would be burned into her memory forever. Her foster sister, 16-year-old Sabrina Zunish, was in the throes of a violent rage, attacking their mother with a large kitchen knife. As Megan stammered into the phone, her words came out in gasps and sobs, She's stabbing my mom. She's stabbing my mom. The dispatcher, trying to piece together the frantic details, urged Megan to stay calm, but the terror in the young girl's voice was unmistakable. Every second felt like an eternity as the dispatcher struggled to understand the chaotic scene described by a child who was living through a real-life nightmare. The brutal attack was happening in real time, with Megan helplessly watching as her foster sister savagely stabbed Lisa again and again. The blood, the screams, the sheer violence of the act, it was all too much for a 13-year-old to comprehend. Yet, through her terror, Megan managed to provide enough information to set the wheels of law enforcement in motion. This call was the first step in unraveling the dark and twisted events that had led to this horrifying moment, a call that would haunt everyone involved for years to come. We wanted to show these kids um, what it was supposed to be like to live in a suburb. We knew we did want to help the children. All I knew was she was in a group home. Mm -hmm. um, taken from her parents or there's something wrong with her parents I think being drug addicts or something like that at a young age she was a little bit grandma um grandma was getting old and Sabrina was taking advantage of that and running around the neighborhood um so the county came in and took custody of her put her in her home um As the chilling 911 call played out, officers from the Willoughby Hills Police Department raced to the Canfield residence, their sirens piercing the early morning silence. 
The details provided by Megan, though fragmented and frantic, had painted a picture of unimaginable horror, and the officers knew they were walking into a scene that would be both gruesome and heartbreaking. When they arrived at the Canful home, the front door was ajar, a sign that something had gone terribly wrong. The officers cautiously entered, their flashlights cutting through the darkness, leading them down the hallway to the master bedroom on the first floor. What they found inside was a scene of sheer brutality. Lisa Canful, a 41-year-old social worker and devoted foster mother, lay motionless on the floor, her body covered in blood. The room was a mess of overturned furniture and scattered belongings, evidence of a violent struggle. But it was the sight of Lisa that made the officer's stomachs turn. She had been stabbed repeatedly, the number of wounds so extensive that it was clear this was no mere outburst of anger. It was a sustained, deliberate attack. Standing over Lisa's lifeless body was Sabrina Zunish, her foster daughter drenched in blood. The officers immediately noticed the black handle of a large serrated knife still clutched in Sabrina's hand, her knuckles white from the force of her grip. Sabrina, once a troubled but seemingly sweet 16-year-old, now stood frozen in place, her eyes glazed over as if in shock from what she had just done. The officers moved quickly, disarming Sabrina and placing her under arrest. As they escorted her out of the room, they couldn't help but take in the full extent of the carnage around them. The floor was slick with blood, the walls spattered with it, and the once peaceful bedroom had become the site of a savage killing. Lisa's husband, Kevin Canful, was not at home that night, away on a work route between Ohio and Michigan. The police would have to break the devastating news to him later, but for now, their focus was on processing the crime scene and trying to make sense of the senseless violence they had just witnessed. The image of Sabrina Zunish, covered in the blood of the woman who had cared for her, would be one that the officers would not soon forget. As the sun rose over Willoughby Hills, the gruesome crime scene inside the Canful home was swarming with investigators, each one tasked with unraveling the mystery of what had transpired the night before. The blood-soaked bedroom where Lisa Canful was brutally murdered told a story of unimaginable violence, but the motive behind the attack remained a dark enigma. As detectives began piecing together the evidence, they were confronted with a perplexing question. Why would a 16-year-old girl, who had been taken in by a loving and supportive foster family, commit such a heinous act? Sabrina Zunish, the young girl at the center of this tragedy, was known to have a troubled past, but nothing in her history seemed to hint at the capacity for such extreme violence. The investigation quickly turned to the relationships within the Canful House household. Detectives began interviewing family members, friends, and anyone who had interacted with Sabrina and the Canfels in the months leading up to the murder. They dug into Sabrina's background, her behavior at school, and her interactions with Lisa and Kevin Canfel. Despite their efforts, the pieces of the puzzle didn't seem to fit together. There was no clear explanation for the savagery of the attack. The initial findings were chilling. Lisa had suffered at least 178 stab wounds, many of them defensive, indicating she had fought desperately for her life. Sabrina herself had sustained cuts during the attack, but these appeared to be self-inflicted or the result of the struggle. The sheer brutality of the crime suggested a level of rage that investigators found hard to comprehend, especially in someone so young. As investigators delved deeper, they began to uncover hints of something darker lurking beneath the surface of the Canful household. There were whispers of tension, of relationships that were not as they seemed, and of secrets that could explain the unimaginable. But as each new piece of evidence was uncovered, it seemed to lead only to more questions, leaving the investigators struggling to understand the true nature of the crime that had shattered this once quiet family. The more they learned, the more it became clear that this was not a simple case of teenage rebellion gone wrong. There was something much more sinister at play, and the investigators were determined to uncover the truth, no matter how twisted it might be. Um, the, uh...
It was at the Tech Center. Oh, Tech Center? I don't know if it was Lake Academy or Downtown World Theater. Yeah. yeah. They got specialized. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a stupid school. But, so. For kids with IEPs and learning disabilities, um, problem kids. And when she went to school, what grade was she in at that time? What grade would she be going into? She was 10th. She was 10th grade. grade. Yeah. Um, how are things in, in the home during that time period? Like, do you need to talk to Sabrina anymore? Yeah. Uh, on and off. On and off? Okay. And how was she during Christmas? Um, okay. The Canful family was known in Willoughby Hills for their generosity and compassion. Lisa Canful, a dedicated social worker, and her husband, Kevin, had made it their mission to provide a safe and loving home for children in need. Over the years, they had opened their doors to numerous foster children, offering them stability and care in the hopes of giving them a brighter future. Their own blended family, consisting of Lisa's daughter, Megan, Kevin's son, Cody, and their young daughter Haley was busy but filled with love. When 16-year-old Sabrina Zunish came into their lives in 2011, she was just another child they hoped to help. Lisa, with her nurturing spirit, was eager to give Sabrina the support and guidance she needed. Kevin, too, welcomed Sabrina into their home, never suspecting that this seemingly typical foster placement would soon lead to an unspeakable tragedy. The Canfuls believed they were offering Sabrina a new beginning, but little did they know, this decision would ultimately lead to the darkest chapter of their lives. Sabrina Zunish's life before the Canfuls was anything but stable. Born into a world of turmoil, she spent her early years bouncing from one foster home to another, never staying in one place long enough to feel secure. Her biological family was plagued by addiction and neglect, leaving Sabrina with deep emotional scars that she carried with her wherever she went. By the time she arrived at the Canfull residence, Sabrina had been through more than most teenagers could imagine. Despite her troubled past, there was hope that the Canfuls could provide her with the stability and love she so desperately needed. On the surface, it seemed like Sabrina had finally found a place where she could belong. However, beneath this facade of normalcy, unresolved issues and emotional turmoil began to simmer. Sabrina was still grappling with the demons of her past, and the pressure of trying to fit into a new family only added to her inner conflict. As time went on, those unresolved issues would bubble to the surface, leading to a series of events that no one in the Canfull family could have predicted. What started as an attempt to help a troubled teenager would end in bloodshed, leaving everyone involved questioning how things had gone so horribly wrong. At first, Sabrina Zunish seemed to adapt well to life with the Canfull family. She participated in family activities, shared meals, and gradually settled into her new home. To an outsider, it might have appeared that Sabrina had finally found the stability and sense of belonging she had long been searching for. Megan, Lisa's biological daughter, initially welcomed Sabrina, and the two girls shared a typical sibling relationship filled with both camaraderie and occasional disagreements. However, as time passed, subtle cracks began to appear in the seemingly harmonious household. Sabrina's troubled past started to manifest in ways that strained her relationships with the family. Tensions began to rise, particularly between Sabrina and Megan, with frequent arguments disrupting the peace. Lisa, who had always been patient and understanding, found herself increasingly frustrated by Sabrina's behavior. The once warm atmosphere of the Canfull home grew tense and uneasy, with a sense of underlying conflict that no one could quite put their finger on. What began as a father-daughter relationship between Kevin Canfull and Sabrina Zunish soon took a dark and troubling turn.
At first, Kevin, like Lisa, took on the role of a supportive and caring foster parent. He was someone Sabrina could trust and rely on, a stable figure in her tumultuous life. But as the months went by, the nature of their relationship began to change in ways that would ultimately set the stage for a devastating tragedy. Kevin's bond with Sabrina grew increasingly close, crossing boundaries that should never have been crossed. What was once a paternal connection began to escalate into something far more sinister. As Sabrina became more isolated from the rest of the family, she grew closer to Kevin, who seemed to offer her the attention and affection she craved. This shift in their relationship did not go unnoticed by Lisa, who started to sense that something was terribly wrong. But by the time she realized the true extent of what was happening, it was too late the seeds of tragedy had already been sown, and the family was hurtling toward a dark and inevitable conclusion. As Sabrina's behavior became increasingly erratic, the atmosphere in the Canfield household grew more tense and volatile. The once peaceful home was now frequently disrupted by outbursts and conflicts, many of which centered around Sabrina. Arguments between her and Megan became more frequent, and Sabrina's relationship with Lisa grew increasingly strained. Lisa, who had always prided herself on being a patient and understanding mother, began to feel that something was deeply wrong. She couldn't shake the feeling that Sabrina was hiding something, and the growing distance between her and Kevin only fueled her suspicions. Unfortunately, by the time Lisa began to piece together the troubling changes in her family, it was already too late to prevent the impending disaster. While tensions simmered in the Canful home, a far more sinister plot was taking shape behind closed doors. Kevin Canful and Sabrina Zunish, who had grown disturbingly close, began to conspire against Lisa. Kevin, burdened by his desire to start a new life with Sabrina and his young daughter Haley, saw a way to make his twisted dream a reality. He revealed to Sabrina that Lisa was worth more to him dead than alive, pointing to the $750,000 life insurance policy they had taken out on her. Together, they devised a plan to murder Lisa, believing that with her out of the picture, they could begin a new chapter together. The dark and calculated nature of their scheme would soon culminate in an act of unimaginable violence. On the early morning of November 16, 2012, Sabrina Zunish carried out the gruesome plan she had hatched with Kevin. With his instructions echoing in her mind, Sabrina entered Lisa's bedroom as she slept, knife in hand. In a frenzied and brutal attack, she stabbed Lisa repeatedly, believing that this act of violence would pave the way for a new life with Kevin and Haley. The murder was swift, savage, and deeply shocking, leaving Lisa lifeless in her own home. As the police arrived at the scene and the reality of what had happened began to sink in, the full extent of Kevin and Sabrina's twisted plot started to come to light. But there would be no happy ending for Kevin Canfield and Sabrina Zunish. Their cold-blooded plan quickly unraveled as investigators pieced together the evidence and uncovered the dark truth behind Lisa's murder. Both Kevin and Sabrina were arrested and charged with a range of serious crimes, including conspiracy to commit murder and aggravated murder. Their trials were sensational, capturing the attention of the media and the public alike. In the end, both were found guilty and sentenced to life in prison, their twisted dreams of a new life shattered. The consequences of their actions left a trail of devastation in its wake, destroying not just their own lives, but the lives of everyone who had once called the Canful household home. And how your relationship with Sabrina developed and evolved. Remember Kevin, we asked him for the truth when we came, came here. If we're getting into all this stuff, are, are I supposed to have my lawyer? But you know that we explained to you when he read you your rights. But also, we asked you for three things. I asked you for the truth. I wanted to hear your side of the story, and uh, we need we needed to talk to you. This is the time to clear the air. So. Well, it's your it's your decision. You know, know you know you have a choice in the matter. Well, I already have, but an attorney on record, I think he. 
should be here for all this. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, I'm only going to say the truth. I'm not going to lie about anything. Right. Else. That's what I asked you for when we came in here. Right. And you know we have the evidence. I have an 11 count indictment here. And I wanted to discuss the whole thing with you, the whole puzzle. You know, each piece of the puzzle we put together for the last eight months. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have the evidence. So, I mean, we are going to go forward with this, as, as you know, and with, as we are going forward with it now. The part you just asked me about, that's your decision, and that's, uh, I wanted to work with you if I could, but, you know, I can't talk to you then. So, you're at the wide in the road, you have to make a decision, you know. But, I thought we had a good conversation going there. Good choice to make, Alvin. No, we do. It's, um, so, you just have to let us know what your decision is. I should have the lawyer before we proceed. Okay. Thanks to Sabrina Zunich's willingness to come forward with details about Kevin's involvement in his wife's murder, investigators had enough to go 